crafty friends and welcome to today's stamping September video. Today I'm going to create a simple card for you using these border stamps. I picked these up at a charity shop so I'm not entirely sure of the manufacturer. They might be stamping up, not sure, but any border stamps that you have will do the trick. So the first thing that I did when creating this card was to create the sentiment. Normally I leave the sentiments until last or towards the end of the card making process, but I wanted to create the sentiment first so I could see how big it was going to be and that way I would know how much space I needed for my border stamps. So I put a piece of smooth white card in my stamp positioner lined up my stamps i've got two stamps here that say thank you and then i inked up my stamps with stays on i use stays on black ink because these are silicone stamps and stays on is really good for silicone stamps it's a solvent based ink pad so it doesn't bead up on silicone once i stamped that a couple of times to get a really good dark impression I stamped it a couple more times with Versamark embossing ink. This is a clear sticky ink. And then I dipped it in clear embossing powder and heated it with my heat tool. And that gave me a really black, shiny, slightly dimensional sentiment. So my idea for this card was to have colorful border strip stamps in the background and the sentiment popped up over the strips. So I took a piece of smooth white card, put it on some double-sided foam adhesive sheets. This is very thin, only about a millimeter thick, and cut a frame, a circle frame out of that with a circle frame die, obviously. And that gave me a dimensional circular frame. And then I took a slightly smaller circle to die cut the thank you and that gave me a circular thank you piece with a gap and then a circular frame. I then put my whole sentiment piece on a piece of smooth white cardstock that I'd cut down to the right size for my card and marked with pencil just above and just below the circle to work out where I wanted to stamp my border stamps. Next I put the piece of card in my stamp positioner I secured it with some washi, which also helped me to work out where I wanted to do my stamping. It created a little border there. And to help me get my border stamps lined up straight, I popped in a bit of gridded acetate. This is a great way to help you align your stamps. You can see exactly how horizontal or vertical they are, depending on what you want. This particular piece of acetate came from a grip mat that I bought from Amazon, but you can make your own using a printer or just a ruler and a permanent marker like a Sharpie. So for my stamping, I started with a row of stars at the bottom and I stamped them in wilted violet. I stamped them twice just to get a good colorful impression. And then I used a wobbly line stamp and stamp that in chipped sapphire. Each time I put in a new stamp, I use that acetate to get it lined up properly. I just cut that part of the process out in the video because that would have been lots of shots of the top of my head because one of the best ways to get your stamps lined up well is to look directly down onto them. So you've got to get your head right over and look down and that way you'll see if they're lined up properly. After the chip sapphire, I used Salty Ocean to stamp some dots. And then I did a swirly line in peacock feathers. As you can see, I'm going for a bit of a rainbow here. Next, I added some triangles in Lucky Clover. And now I've got another wobbly line in Squeeze Lemonade. Mm -hmm. 
And now a wavy line in Spice Marmalade. And for my last line, which is another line of stars, I broke out festive berries. I don't use this one very often because I'm not a fan of bright red, but sometimes it's useful. I often get asked which distress oxides to invest in. And if I was going to suggest some bright colors to you, these are exactly the ones that I would suggest. It's a great little rainbow. So once I had all my stamping done, I trimmed down my panel ever so slightly so that the border strips went exactly from one side to the other. I then used Tape Runner to stick this panel down to the front of a card blank. I then added my circle frame onto the panel to the right hand side slightly and then I took the thank you piece, added some more foam to the back of that and then added it in the middle of the circle. So as I said before, I've got my thank you circle and then a circular gap so you can see through to the stamping behind and then a circle frame. Just a little bit of something different. I did um and ah about whether it needed anything else, but I thought let's put in a little bit of bling. So I've got some gold glitter card circles here, and I added three to the bottom left and three to the top right. So there's a little bit of diagonal flow going on. And to finish off the little circles, I covered them in glossy accents. So now they're dimensional and glossy. And that's this card finished. I hope you found this video helpful and it's given you a few tips on lining up your stamps. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe, ring the notification bell, all those things that we always ask you to do. And I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.